Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. I'm a beauty enthusiast and consultant who loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup and today I am gonna be sharing with you how you can make your dewy foundations last longer on the skin, how you can just in general get your foundations to last longer on the skin. I've got the tips for you. You'll definitely wanna stay tuned for all of that. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. And let's get right into this video. Yes, we're in August and depending on where you live, you may not have too much of your summer days left, but this could still benefit you because this tip is definitely not just going to be for the summer months. This is a tip that will work for essentially anybody who wants, number one, their foundations to be more oil controlled all throughout the day. Two, you want your foundations just to look more blurring and smooth and buttery on the skin. Three, you want your products to apply even better on top of the foundation. And then four, you want it to hold up under heat, sweat, and all of the things. And so that is what Balm Powder does. So I'm going to get into the demonstration of it. It's not gonna be a long video because you're gonna see it for yourself. So what I did was I was trying to think of a, of a foundation that is quite dewy, doesn't last as long on the skin as I would prefer it to last. And as it wears throughout the day, it kind of doesn't look as good. And <laughs> As much as I really like this foundation, the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation does all of that. So I have the shade 10N, and when you first apply it, it's beautiful on the skin. I have also done a full review of this foundation, so I'll link that for you so you can see what it looks like at the end of the day. It just doesn't wear as nicely as it could. So I've used other shades with the bone powder in this shade, and I was like, I need a good one. And this was a good one. Okay, so this is definitely more of a dewier foundation. Like I said, it doesn't last as long on the skin and the longer I wear it, it really doesn't look its best. And then of course, wearing it in the summer hot heat doesn't really hold up as well. So what I did was I put the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation on this side of the face by itself. Just to give you a little bit of background to prep my skin, I went in with Pat McGrath's Rose Essence and then just in my T-zone area, I use the Dior Dream Skin Care and Perfect skincare product slash primer. That's all I did. So went in with Beautiful Skin Foundation on this side of the face and upon initial application, this foundation is beautiful. Beautiful skin, it is absolutely gorgeous. Then I went in with Universal Shade of the balm powder and beautiful skin. So I just took me a little palette here and I put, I guess, about the same amount of the foundation on the palette. And then with the balm powder, something that um, you wanna take note of, there is a little spatula that comes. And if you look really close to the spatula, the amount of surface area that's on the spatula is all the product that you would need. And that's the max amount of product that you will need. So when you are scooping your balm powder out, don't feel like you've got to literally fill the spatula to the brim and overflowing. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine, but you really don't need that much product. When I'm watching her do it, especially when she's using it for her, her Teach Me Tuesdays, half the time she's not even filling half the spatula and then she's using like even less of that actual product. So you don't need a lot to get it to work the way that you want it to get it to work. Mix them both on the palette and I just mixed it with my hand to blend in the balm powder with the foundation, applied it onto the face and immediately as it's blending out into the skin, you see a difference. And one thing that I've noticed when I am mixing balm powder with any of my other foundations, no matter what, that foundation is going to do two things immediately. Number one, the blurring effect is going to be so apparent. And number two, I actually have more coverage from mixing the balm powder with the foundation. And it's not just with the Beautiful Skin Foundation. I have done this with a few of my foundations. 
the effects are all the same. I get more coverage. The blend is even more smooth and buttery. Like it's just silky and it just looks better upon initial application. So if you have not seen my initial review of the Blurring Balm Powder, if you're like, who is Danessa Myrigs? Blurring Balm Powder, why am I even, you know, interested in this product? Let me give you some quick high points about this. So she created this product with a ingredient in it called Upsilite. Upsilite is going to be a component that has pores in it. And the whole purpose of this component is to trap oils in the pores of the Upsilite and keep them there. Instead of that sitting on top of your face and your face looking all oily, looking like a grease slick, it gets trapped in the Upsilite. And so as you are wearing this product throughout the day, it is going to be controlling your oils throughout the day. So let's say you apply this and then three hours later, you're outside in the heat and you start to sweat. It's going to work even more during that time compared to when you first applied it. And then let's say you're outside, then you go inside and you cool down. It's still working, but it's not working as hard because you're not producing as much oil. So it literally, it is, it's so amazing how this product does work. And that is the ingredient that makes this product such a standout product and it makes it so durable. So this is, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, I find this to be even better than a powder by itself because when you set your face with powder, you apply the powder and initially, especially if you're going for a more mattified look, you're matte, you're, you know, everything is set. But as the day goes on and your body starts to produce or your skin starts to make those oils, eventually it's going to break through the powder with the balm powder, the Upsilite that's within the balm powder is going to continue to work to keep you looking more mattified, but not dry, not cakey, just more oiled controlled. So that's the beauty of this product. That is why I feel that this is the product for anybody who is looking to, like I mentioned before, make your foundations last longer, control your oils, make your foundations look even more blurred. And also if you want your products to just apply more smoothly onto your foundation and your skin, this is the product that's going to do it for you. Okay, so just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. We're all excited for the same reasons <laughs> and let's continue on. So I know that you've already seen the clips of me applying both products on the face. So just the Charlotte Tilbury on this side and then the balm powder with Charlotte Tilbury on this side. And I definitely want to hear your feedback in the comment section below. You guys know I love all things Danessa, Danessa Myricks, her products, but you guys also know I love to hear your opinion. So please leave me your feedback. Let me know your thoughts. If you see the difference in how the products look on my skin because I definitely saw them and see them and that's why I'm so in love with this product. So I wanted to, you know, make sure that you could understand how oils are controlled. I wanted you to see it because seeing it is believing, right? So I have had this face on you guys. I've had this face on now for almost 12 hours almost 12 hours. And I did apply some powder earlier today. I was filming a video on Floresis makeup. And so I went in with this translucent powder here. So I applied this powder, I wanna say, I wanna say I applied this powder about five hours ago, about five hours ago. Um, so we've had time for the powder to kind of set mesh in with my face and my skin. And so this is what we're looking like. So I'm gonna come in close so we can take a look at both sides of the face to see how is everything still holding up after 12 hours. So coming in close, for me, I can definitely see that this side of the face does have a little more shine, a little more glow than this side does. If you're looking at my pores right along here, I feel like my pores are more visible right along here compared to this side of the face that has the Charlotte Tilbury and the Blurring Balm Powder. And I feel like there is a little more coverage on this side of my face than on this side of my face that just has the Charlotte Tilbury foundation by itself. And so after about 12 hours, let me just tell you, this foundation does not hold up for 12 hours by itself looking like this. I think, oh, I've got lipstick on my chin. Why'd y'all tell me? 
I have definitely worn this foundation before. It does not hold up <laughs> this well on its own. I think what has allowed for it to hold up as long as it did was me applying powder to it. I actually might put in a clip of me filming the video of me wearing this makeup look so you can see what both sides of my face look like before I put the powder on. If I insert the clip, then I'll just put a little note and you all will know what you're watching. Um, but at that moment, I had had the foundations on only for about a few hours and you could already start to see the Charlotte Tilbury kind of like wearing down. It wasn't looking as beautiful on the skin, but the side with the Charlotte Tilbury and the Blurring Balm powder still was looking so beautiful, so intact. Like this side of my face, we could still be rocking for a good while. Like I still have a whole lot of face left, <laughs> like a whole lot of day left in this face on this side of the face. Whereas on this side, it looks like, you know, I might need to apply my finishing powder or setting powder, you know, if I want to control the shine that's coming right along here. Um, even when, and I didn't get this on camera, so I'm so sorry, I didn't think to do it until afterwards. Um, but even when I was applying my concealer, so I am wearing the Dior Backstage Concealer and I have the shade 3W. This concealer, it's so funny because it's not a favorite, but I I actually kind of do really like this concealer. It's not the easiest to work with and you have to move quickly. Like it's it's quite special. You know, it likes things a certain type of way. So I applied this concealer, let it sit on my face for just a little bit and it started to dry down. So when I went to go apply it or blend it in on this side of my face, I found myself having to really kind of work to blend it in because it started to dry and set. Well, on this side of the face, it had some slip to it. It almost was just a little more creamy blending it on this side of the face compared to this side of the face. And I was like, the only difference is I have the Blurring Balm powder on this side of the face compared to this side of the face. Um, and I was like, and I already knew that because I have been wearing this combination and not just with the Beautiful Skin Foundation, but I've been using this balm powder with other foundations. So I know at this point it is the Blurring Balm powder. My tips for you, this, like I said, this is for anybody. This is not just for oily skin. This is not just for people who want a more mattified look. Even if you have dry skin, you prep your skin the way that you would prep your skin any type of way. So I always love watching her Teach Me Tuesdays because I learn something new every Tuesday. And she has applied this on people who have excessively dry skin. If you prep your skin with hydrating primers and then go in with this product, it will really work good for you. So these are my suggestions after using this product for months and loving it. Number one, if you do have dry skin, go in with some really good hydrating products. So for her she's gonna always recommend going in number one with her beauty oil first and then going in with her yummy glow serum this is it for me i absolutely love this this is still my moisturizer of the day i cannot get enough of this product it's a primer but it also balances out the ph of your skin hydrates the skin moisturizes it it, it just does all the things, okay? All the things. But anytime she preps someone's skin, especially if they have dry skin, she goes in with these two products first and the skin looks very juicy, it looks very hydrated. Then she moves on to applying the balm powder. Like I said, don't go in with too much, only go in with a little bit. If you know anything about Danessa and her products, you never need a lot just a little bit. So when I want to use this with the foundation, I always like to mix the foundation and the blurring balm powder first and then apply it to the skin. I just like the idea of making sure that both products are mixed cohesively, they're all in one, and then I apply it to the skin, blend it into the skin to your liking with the sponge, your fingers, or a brush. You can use the blurring balm powder and you can mix it with dewy foundations, satin foundations, even matte foundations. You can even, if you know anything about her Vision Cream cover, this thing is like <laughs> bulletproof. You can mix them both together and get an even more blurred bulletproof type of product. It literally is the master manipulator 
for anything and everything you need it to be. So when you're using this product, do not keep it in the confines of just complexion either. And don't keep it in the confines of, I either use it with a product or without a product. Think of this as in, I can use this with any and everything. So for instance, you can mix this with your cream blushes if you want your cream blushes to last longer. If you also, let's say you've got a cream blush bronzer, you find it's kind of, stiff and hard to move take you a little bit of balm powder take you a little bit of your cream product <laughs> mix that joker together i'm telling you it's silky smooth you can use the universal shade and really any of her tinted shades as well you can use the tinted shades the same way that you use the universal shade so that's that too you can take the balm powder use it as your eye primer so especially if you do have oily eyelids go in with just a smidge of the balm powder apply it onto your eyelids Eyeshadow is not going to crease, not going to get oily, and it will last longer. You can put this in your brows. I have done that as well. Put it in your brows if your brows are oily to kind of keep them not oily. So then your brow products will last even longer. You can wear the tinted one on your lips. I'm telling you, anything you think of that the balm powder could possibly be mixed with, it can be mixed with and it will make it even better. I've taken the tinted shade, I wanna say it was shade eight. Um, and one day I was like, gosh, I don't know what to put on my lips. And I was like, well, let me put the balm powder on. Put that joker on my lips and my lips immediately became like more smooth. So if you have texture on your lips and you're like, I really wanna like smooth out the fine lines in my lips, put the balm powder on first, then put your lip product on. I'm telling you, game changer game changer and yes i love these products yes i love her and you can think that i'm biased and that's totally your opinion but i am making a dedicated video because it works and if you're somebody like me who really wants to know about all products but also knowing like how can i get the most out of my product this is why i'm making this video now I've said all of that, told you all the ways that you can use this product. You can mix it with any and everything. You can mix it with your liquid highlighters as well. I mean, if it can be mixed with, you can mix it with the balm powder. And like I said, you can use the universal shades or you can use the tinted shades to do the same thing. It's just how you want to do it. Um, before I move on to my next point, if you wanted to use this as an actual face primer, so you know what, Chelsea, I think I want to use the bone powder as a primer to my skin. Can I really do that instead of going in with a separate primer? Yes, you can, which Danessa actually always does that. She'll go in with the universal shade because she's oily. She puts it in her T-zone area as her initial primer, and then she'll go in with a tinted bone powder shade if she's doing more of a quick makeup look to actually conceal, you know, her under eye area, even out her complexion and she's done. So you can do that or let's say it's a very quick day for you and you're just like, I gotta be in and out the door, but I just kind of want to blur the skin, blur my pores and be done. Take universal shade, put it over your pores, use your fingers. I mean, it's so quick in its application. So I've been nice or good and I've been using my scooper, but with shade five, cause that's the shade that I use a lot. I typically will either just go straight in with my hand or my brush. I've already hit pan on this one. I mean, it's so silky smooth and just blend it into the face and be done with it. So you can use your fingers, your brush, your sponge, however you'd like to use the balm powder, it can be used. Um, but if you literally just wanted to, do, to use the, the universal shade to even out just like your pores and texture and be done, you can do that as well. Now let's say you're like, Chelsea, well, I don't wanna mix it. I wanna put my foundation on first and then put this on top. Absolutely, and I've actually done this in other videos. I can't recall what they are, I'm so sorry. Um, where I have been like, this is my powder for the day. So what I do is I take my foundation, apply it onto the skin. The brush that I love to use with the balm powder, cause Danessa said it, so <laughs> she said it, I go with it. Um, it's the Rose and Ben C41, but I also love using, you guys know I love the BK Beauty 101 brush. If you like know that I love this, then you know that I love this. Another one of my favorite brushes, it's very similar to the Rose and Ben too. This is a great brush to use with it. For me, any type of dense brush, I really enjoy with the balm powder. A dense but blendable brush. 
So I'll take the, um, if I'm gonna use the bone powder as my setting powder on top of my foundation, just take my brush and literally press it into the skin because pressing into the skin is going to also facilitate the blurring effect and then it will also help the product to blend very easily into the skin. So take it and just press it in the areas that I want to further blur and set and I'm done. Like it literally can be whatever you want it to be. But let's say you're like, Chelsea, I don't believe that this blurring balm powder can really control my oils throughout the day because I am the oiliest person on this planet. I still wanna use my powder. You can absolutely do that as well. So I have seen her apply the balm powder to her model's faces and then go in with a, a, an actual setting powder to set the face. It works. It literally can work with anything and any product. So this is a product, like for me, this is a staple in my makeup collection now. It's a staple in my kit when I am doing other people's makeup. So I wanted to share this with you all because I've been wanting to do this type of video for such a long time because I have loved this product. And I know you hear me continuing to talk about it. I sometimes get questions from you all and I just wanted to put it all in one video. So I really hope that this was a comprehensive video Video that allows you to understand how you can use the burning balm powder with other types of products because it really does or it really can make a difference in the longevity of your makeup and it also can kind of like almost give you a new product without having to buy a new product um, and so I hope that this was really helpful for you if there are questions that I did not answer, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'd love to answer them for you. Let me know your thoughts. If you have the Blurring Balm powders, do you love them? Do you not love them? Because I like to hear that stuff too, because you know, everybody doesn't love everything. But I would love to hear those types of comments because we can always learn from each other. So leave all of that down in the comment section below. And if you've made it to this point in the video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.